welcome to CityWise. I'm your host, Tiana Stevens. CityWise is produced by the City of Rochester to shine a spotlight on city living at its best. Well, 20 years ago in Rochester, three lawyers had the idea to create a support network for African American lawyers in the greater Rochester area that would tap into the resources and network of the National Bar Association. Throughout the years, the Rochester Black Bar Association has grown to be a leading organization promoting the needs of legal professionals in our community, and it's focusing its efforts on engaging the next generation of lawyers and judges in Rochester. And with us today, Fatima Reed, president of the RBBA, and Aaron Frazier, vice president of programs and president-elect. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank and you congratulations on 20 years. Yes. Let's start with the history of the RBBA. How did this all get started? Well, RBB was started, um, as you said, 20 years ago, um, really to um, really to promote the um, benefits um, of the legal profession um, and to um, deal with the professional development of African American attorneys um, in the city of Rochester. And so we had um, three attorneys: Don Wade, Kendall Tier, and um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kettle Tear. Um, and what they did is um, they banded together to um, to basically start the Rochester Black Bar, Bar Association again to promote um, to promote the benefits of the legal profession and to promote um, professional development for African American attorneys. Okay, what are some of the functions of the RBBA or some of the programs that you do? We offer continuing legal education courses, which are courses that attorneys are required to take. We have to take a certain amount of hours each year. And the purpose of those courses are just to help attorneys maintain their professional competence in emerging areas of law or changing areas of law. So some of the programs that we offer in that regard are programs designed to help attorneys um, and, and help attorneys understand the value, for example, of offering pro bono services or services mm -hmm. free of charge to indigent clients. We're also trying to put together a, I'm sorry, a CLE on retention to help area law firms retain minority talent. Okay. There is um, a lack of, a sort of lack of diversity in the legal profession. Mm -hmm. So the, one of the big reasons that the Rochester Black Bar Association exists is to help ameliorate that problem. Mm -hmm. And who can be a member of the RBPA? Um, anyone really um, can be a member. We have different membership um, classes. Um, we have students um, who can join um, the RBBA for free. Um, and then um, first year um, lawyers um, can join um, the RBBA and their membership fee will be waived. Um, we have affiliate members who range um, from business owners um, mm -hmm. to anyone who really um, just has a vested interest in um, seeing the advance advancement of minority um, attorneys in the the Rochester area um, as well as attorneys they can all join um, the RBBA and uh, that fee um, is $50 per year. Okay and you guys have um, increased your efforts and, and reach out into the schools lately. How, how does that look? What are you guys doing exactly? Well, going back to, to the membership question, we are trying to uh, recruit, especially college students, to, to, to sort of be unofficial members of the organization, mm -hmm. especially college students who are interested in becoming lawyers, because we think that being able to form that partnership with, young, with the young students who are especially interested in becoming lawyers or just joining the legal profession in general or an ancillary profession to the legal profession, forming that partnership, I think, is a huge step in ameliorating those diversity concerns that, that I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, not to toot my own horn, but I, am a, I think that I'm probably a successful example of what we're trying to do and that I was born and raised in this community. I attended public schools um, all my life. I'm a proud graduate of 58 school, elementary school, and then School of the Arts. Mm -hmm. um, and the Rochester Black Bar Association identified me at an, in high school as someone who uh, identified himself as someone who wanted to become an attorney, and they supported me. Um, okay. Throughout high school, I was involved in the Rochester Teen Court Program, and I got to meet a lot of great members of the, RB, of the RBBA, including Caroline Morrison, who's now a city court judge, uh, Roy King, who is a retired city court judge, and many, many others who took me under their wing and supported me throughout college, well into law school, through the bar exam, and now in my first year as an attorney. Mm -hmm. And it seems you reach out even to the younger kids, um, like say at school 19. Can you tell us about that partnership and what you do with those students? 
Yes, we had a wonderful program um, for Black History Month um, at School 19, um, in which our members um, were so excited about. Uh, we had um, a Black History Month presentation, and um, the chair of that was one of our, our, our social chair, um, and who was on the executive board for the Rochester Black Bar Association by the name of Shawnee Curry. Um, she um, created a slideshow presentation with the help of Aaron and um, Judge Roy King, as Aaron mentioned, and um, basically what they took the students um, through is the history of African-American attorneys in the Rochester area. Um, and so the students um, had sort of a sense of um, what attorneys are, what they do, mm -hmm. and um, basically they were, to, they were able to see attorneys that look like them. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was a wonderful presentation. Aaron, I don't know if you want to, Aaron was one of the pre presenters, so okay. I don't know if he wants to elaborate on that a little sure. bit. We gave the students a full run through of the history of African-American attorneys in this county as well as in the nation. Wow. We, I, mean, I think we started um, in the mid 19th century with the students in terms of African American attorneys in Monroe County and just walk them through the, the great contributions that African American attorneys have made historically and in the present day and they were so amazed at all of the big and exciting things that African American attorneys are doing. Of course we talked to them about our lovely mayor as well as our president who are both attorneys mm -hmm. but we also talked to them about some exciting attorneys who are doing things in industry like Nina Shaw who's a very famous entertainment lawyer and she gets to work with uh, movie stars and, mm -hmm. and entertain and entertainers and musicians all day and students were just fascinated by the the degree of versatility that comes with a law degree the different things that you can do with a law degree um, and we, we had some great questions for the students I mean a lot of them asked about well, what is it like to be an attorney um, they asked about the bar exam we walked them through the bar <laughs> exam that horrendous <laughs> process right. um, and, and, and they were just as shocked as, as I think we all were when we first heard about the process <laughs> but many of them were still very interested in becoming attorneys they accepted the hard work and I, I think that's why we need to do programs like that because it gives the students that history lesson and that history lesson I think contributes to their confidence which mm -hmm. allows them to pursue whatever their dreams are because I, I think that's a real one of the big reasons why the RBBA exists because we want to help the young people of this community pursue their dreams if they want to become lawyers that's great we love it but we, we, we really want to use our power and experience as attorneys to open the doors no matter what their dreams are Sure. So my next question was going to be, why do you think it's important to engage youth at a young age? And you kind of answered that, but specifically for yourselves, what does it mean for you to be part of this organization? Well, really, um, I, I know it's been said time and time again, but the, uh, but the, uh, the children really are the future. Um, and we think about each of us, and um, th through my time in the RBB, I've gotten to know um, a wide range of people. And even I think about myself. Um, you know, I, even while I was born in the United States, um, uh, my mother um, took us to Nigeria at a very young age. Um, she was in this country as a, an illegal immigrant for many years, so um, she couldn't stay here. And so she took us back to Nigeria, um, and we lived, um, you know, in, in a s one house, a very small house. Um, with several people and not having a lot of money. And um, in Nigeria, if you often want education, um, you have to pay for it. Um, you have to be from a well-to-do family and to pay for it. And you didn't see a lot of examples. Like for myself, I did not see a lot of examples of young or African-American women mm -hmm. um, or anyone that looked at me that was a lawyer. Um, I didn't see a lot of women who were able to be advocates for any sort of rights. Um, and so for me, um, it's personal that I have an opportunity here um, right here where I live I have um, three children two small daughters who um, you know I hope am an example for and um, right here in Monroe County um, for me I hope to be an example for someone who uh, may not feel as if their situation their current situation will lead to a better and brighter future and um, for me I hope to show someone a young a young person that no matter what their situation currently is they have a bright future that if you work hard and you're diligent that mm -hmm. you will have a bright future and that you do have a voice um, so personally for me I, I hope just to be that sort of inspiration um, to persevere and to climb out of whatever situation that they're in I totally agree. It's that example and that support that the Rochester Black, uh, Black Bar Association provides that has been so meaningful to me 
Well, again, I grew up in the inner city in Rochester. Mm -hmm. um, no one in my nuclear family had a bachelor's degree, so it, I had no one to turn to in terms of trying to understand how to get into college, and then once I'm in, how to navigate that process and mm -hmm. how to go about navigating that process in such a way that I can maximize my chances of actually achieving the ultimate career goals that I had. And being able to make those connections in high school through prominent African American attorneys in the Rochester community, as well as prominent non-African American attorneys in the Rochester community, because the Rochester Black Bar Association has a lot of wonderful non-African American attorneys and judges among its ranks, many of whom who were just as influential to me in my development as an attorney and as a, as a student growing into an attorney, including mm -hmm. Judge Yaklin. Judge Ellen Yaklin is a city court judge, and she's a great, wonderful contributing member of our organization, and I got to know her through the Teen Corps pr uh, program, and she wrote me amazing letters of recommendation. Um, it's the support of individuals like that that allowed me to go from uh, living in the inner city at a, at a city school to Harvard. I went to Harvard for college on a full ride, and then to Cornell Law School. And it's, it's that support, because there were times in college and in law school where I didn't know how I was going to do it. And in those times, you know, I emailed Caroline Morrison or I emailed um, Judge Stephen Miller or called them up on the phone and said, you know, I'm struggling here. How did you all get through this? This is insane. And they talk with me and they joke with me. And then when I come back for vacations, they take me out to lunch. And we just swap stories and just mm -hmm. talk about this beast that we've gotten ourselves <laughs> into and, and how at the end of the day, as tough as it can be, it's all worth it because it really is a noble profession. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a great support network. What made you want to be, become a lawyer? Aaron well I, un unfortunately I have to I have to give the rather the rather childish answer that it was television you know I, I, uh. I saw the legal TV <laughs> shows and I, I ate that stuff up I, I thought that Hollywood make the profession look so fun and so exciting mm -hmm. and then my parents you know I had some great parents and they, they saw me really getting into those shows and I was about 13 or 14 at the time and they said Aaron you know I, I think the, you really seem to like this law stuff why don't we go down to the courthouse on your spring break and watch some real cases so we did that mm -hmm. my parents actually took me down to the courthouse and we watched some real cases we watched everything from petty city court arraignments to, to a murder trial and I got to compare and contrast what I saw on TV with the real mm -hmm. life and I was still even fascinated with what I saw in real life of course what you see in real life is a lot a lot less uh, dr uh, dramatic than what sure. you see on, in, in Hollywood and in the movies. But it, I still found it exciting. I found it very noble. And then um, while I was actually watching those cases, that's when I found out about Teen Court. A bailiff actually saw that we had been coming every day. I told him I wanted to be a lawyer, and he told me about the Teen Court program. So I got involved in that, and that allowed me to get some great trial experience representing real teen defendants in real sentencing trials. And I got to know a lot of prosecutors, defense attorneys, and real judges through that program and I, I think they as they say experience is the best judge of everything and I got that mm -hmm. experience in high school in this profession and I loved it and by the end of high school I knew that that, that was what I wanted to do. Well that's great and Pajma you mentioned to me that you know kids will usually think of the, the law and order or w what they see on TV but tell us about what you do at City Hall and how different that is and Yes, uh, thank you for asking that, Tiana. <laughs> I think one thing we found in um, when we do go to schools and we do talk to students is that a lot of students believe that the entire legal um, practice is about criminal law. And in fact, um, <laughs> our legal practice is a wonderful, <laughs> diverse, <laughs> diverse area. And what I do is I'm what you call a municipal attorney um, and I practice civil litigation. So that's everything that does not deal with um, criminal mm -hmm. law. So I represent represent the city, I represent the taxpayer's interest, and I defend a city, um, I defend a city's interest in court. So, um, uh, you know, I do a lot of motion practice. I read and I write a lot. Um, and then when we do have to appear in court, which is not um, as often as maybe some criminal attorneys appear, mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I will appear um, on behalf of the city. So um, again, what I do is I represent, I defend the city, that the city and its departments are my client. Um, and so Civil litigation certainly um, is a different um, beast of its own than um, criminal law. Okay. Um, Aaron, you mentioned that while you were in college, you were in contact with judges, other lawyers. What sort of resources does RBBA provide for um, lawyers just out of college to help them get jobs, connect them with other, other people? Judge Stephen Miller 
actually won this year. The RBBA annually gives an award called the Bridges to Success. Um, the event is called the Bridges to Success event, and mm -hmm. the award is the Bridge Builder Award. And this year, Judge, we gave it to Judge Miller because he has really gone above and beyond the call of duty in helping recent graduates and, attor and younger attorneys who maybe want to make a transition mm -hmm. find their place in the law, whether that be in a private law firm, big or small, whether that be in a government office. So that's probably one of the big thing, one of the big resources that we have is that we have experienced attorneys whose reputation whose reputations are so amazing. And they have this breadth of knowledge in terms of where the openings are, and they have this breadth of knowledge in terms of their colleagues' personalities and likes and dislikes. So they can help the younger attorneys navigate in terms of, okay, where would be a, where would be a good fit for me given my own working style, my own personality, and my own career goals? And we gave that to Judge Miller because he's, he's really been excellent about, mm -hmm. you know, about allowing younger attorneys to bounce ideas off of him. Another thing that the RBBA offers is scholarships. We offer scholarships to help uh, high school students who want to, who, who are thinking about pre-law or similar major in college. We also mm -hmm. offer. We're also we're also thinking about offering a, a college scholarship to help college students who are interested in going to law school uh, defray the cost of the law sure. school admissions tests and all the very expensive law school applications. <laughs> and then we also currently offer a law school scholarship for students who are currently in law school. So we have the financial resources and we have the networking resources to help uh, interested, uh, to help in young people who are interested in becoming attorneys really find out what the profession is all about. And then if they're still interested after that, find out where their place is within the profession. Mm -hmm. What do you think and the most important function of RBBA is? Um, Tiana, I would say that um, just to piggyback off what Aunt, um, Aaron just said is we are a resource for the community um, and um, just in the just to follow up on what Aaron said we also take meetings um, with um, different students all over the city um, and we just recently hosted a panel discussion at the Rochester Career Mentoring School in um, which we, ba we basically gave an A to Z um, premiere on how to become an attorney um, and the students uh, really were thrilled by that. Um, they, they sincerely enjoy, enjoyed um, the practice and they were able to talk to um, a, a panel of five to six attorneys and really pick their brain and understand what they need to do, um, let's say starting from high school through college going into, um, going into law school. So um, I think the most important thing is that RBA, RBBA is a resource um, for people. We have, um, again as Aaron mentioned, a wide range of um, different types of people and different points in their career. Mm -hmm. um, who um, are very knowledgeable um, about whether it's different um, internships um, or different positions um, at law firms or governmental agencies. Um, so that's one thing. Um, REB is a tremendous resource uh, for the community. Okay. What sort of other community outreach events besides going into schools does RBBA engage in? Oh. Uh, different from the educational things that we do in the schools, we do offer a mock trial program to okay. help students um, get that, that sort of real life understanding of what the law is. So in addition to helping them understand the history and culture of African American attorneys in the surrounding area, we try to also give them that practical mm -hmm. um, education as to what the day to day, um, what the day to day life of an attorney actually is. Um, um, and we um, we also do different uh, volunteer um, opportunities for okay. if anyone is interested in um, again either going into a school or um, you know in the past we've held voter registration drives um, we've also participated in the city's clean sweep mm -hmm. so we also um, provide an opportunity for people who are interested um, in volunteering in the community at large um, we also uh, do that as well okay who are, um, tell us a little bit about the group who are some of the notable members or past members Sure, I think uh, one of our uh, most notable uh, past members is our current mayor, mm -hmm. um, Lovely Warren, who was also president of the uh, Rochester Black Bar Association. She set um, a tremendous tone uh, for the organization when, um, uh, when she, while she was president, she actually went to uh, the different law firms. There was an issue um, in Rochester where um, the their 
there was not enough um, recruitment um, by way of diverse attorneys in the city of Rochester and uh, Mayor Warren at that time um, she met with law firms, she met with managing partners, and she um, stressed the importance um, of a, a diverse community and um, mm -hmm. a diverse law firm. Um, so that's one person, again, as um, Aaron, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, but, but yeah, before we leave um, Mayor Warren, she, uh, she, that also reminded me of something that's relevant to the previous question, because Mayor Warren helped found the Rochester Black Bar Association Judicial Evaluation Committee. Okay. So every year, now the committee um, the committee tends to range from between seven to thirteen people each year, and we invite all of the candidates who are running for a judicial office in the area in mm -hmm. for an interview. They submit voluminous paperwork in terms of an application, and we review their application, and then we ask them some pretty difficult questions just so that we can assess. Um, their competency for the bench and their judicial temperament and we also assess their sensitivity to issues that traditionally affect minorities and African Americans specifically. So that's a service that we provide to the community and African Americans and minorities within the community so that they can get an assessment of these candidates um, sensitivity to issues that affect them that don't necessarily affect others in the community or at least not to the same degree. Mm -hmm. Um, going, going back to the question on the floor, um, we also have Todd Ballard, who is a partner with Harris Beach. That's where I work. He's also a former Monroe County legislator. Um, Caroline Morrison, she's mm -hmm. a city court judge. Uh, Teresa Johnson, city court judge. Stephen Miller, city court judge. Uh, Maya Dixon, city court judge. Um, we have T. Andrew Brown, who um, is the name partner in Brown and Hutchinson, and who is also currently uh, the Corporation Counsel to the City of Rochester. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, Tara Johnson, who is uh, currently the um, Director of IT for Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, we have um, Ruth Brooks Ward, mm -hmm. who is a local real estate broker. Uh, we I, we have such a diverse um, array of members. I mean, it's it's really amazing um, to see and watch. Yeah, we've uh, also got Justice Sconier. She is a appellate division, Fourth Department, Supreme Court Justice. So New York does things a little weird in the way we name our courts. <laughs> so in most other states and in the federal government, the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. In our state, it's an intermediate level court. So Justice Sconier sits right in between the trial court and the court of last resort in our state. And it's not, it's not all the time that a case that would go to Justice Conyers actually gets to go to the Court of Appeals. That's the mm -hmm. highest court in our state. So a lot of the times, Justice Conyers has the last word on an mm -hmm. issue in a case. So that's an extremely important role, and we are very proud of her. She's very active in our organization, um, and she's very supportive of a lot of the membership in our organization. And you guys have a very important event coming up later this fall, the gala to celebrate your 20th anniversary. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we're, um, we're very excited to celebrate um, our 20th um, anniversary gala this year. Um, we're really doing things um, differently um, in a big way. We really want a lot of community involvement because our big reach this year really is just um, to have the community um, really embrace the RBBA and really um, support us and join us mm -hmm. um, in our continued efforts efforts um, to advance um, issues for minority um, for minority attorneys. Um, so this year, um, our gala will be on November 1st. Um, it will be at the Rochester Riverside Convention Center. And we've secured, um, we're very excited about the keynote speaker um, we've secured. Um, it's the um, New York State Court of Appeals judge, one of the newer judges, Judge Abdul Salam. Um, she has graciously, um, graciously agreed um, to be our keynote speaker this year mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, share some of her wisdom um, with us. Um, it, it's really going to be a tremendous, it's going to be a big celebration. Um, we're going to have dancing <laughs> at mm -hmm. the end of the night, which we've never <laughs> had a before. Gala but yeah, we, you know, sure. but it's really, this is a point of celebration. So yeah. um, we're really excited. All our committees are uh, fiercely working um, to, to make it the best, um, um, to make it the best celebration ever. Um, and there we're going to present um, different awards and um, all also present some of the scholarships that um, Aaron has mentioned. Okay, that sounds wonderful. And this is open to the community. Anyone can purchase a ticket to 
come to the gala? Yes, yes, we, we sincerely encourage um, community involvement. We hope um, people will um, look at the website, rbbalaw.org, uh, mm -hmm. and um, keep ap um, apprised of um, the different things that will be coming up for the gala. And anyone in the community is invited. We encourage the community to come and to meet um, the different attorneys um, in town and the different um, uh, business people um, that are currently in Rochester. Wonderful. Well, thank you both very much for your service to Rochester. Thank you. Again, to thank learn you. more about the Rochester Black Bar Association, you can call 502-8736 or visit rbbalaw.org. Thanks for joining us on this edition of CityWise. I'm Tiana Stevens, and we'll see you next week. Well, you guys were